would like to start by asking a question. Are we alone in the universe? Think on that for a second. Just in our galaxy, there's more than 400 billion stars. And the Hubble telescope have estimated there are more than 100 billion galaxies out there. So uh, what do you think? Are we alone? Um, Earth, you are here. Uh, this is the place you were born. This is the place where everything you know of comes from. Uh, this is the story of every human history throughout life. Uh, and this is also the story from Stone Age to the Information Age. Uh, everything happened here. And here? And here? We are quite small in the big, uh, in the big universe. We're just a small dot on the screen. And Earth was formed about four and a half billion years ago. Uh, in the early solar system, huge amount of masses collided into each other. And uh, material was transported from one planet to the other. So uh, in that sense, uh, material from Earth was transported to Mars and from Mars to Earth because of the big energy impact when the impactor hit the surface. So in practice, that means that um, if life started on Earth, you'd be transported all the way over to Mars. And opposite, or the third option, of course, which is life could start totally independent of each other on the different planets. So this was actually something I was uh, thinking of back in early 2012 when I was going over to NASA Ames. I was uh, sitting in the airplane, and uh, next to me there was this, uh, this nice lady, and uh, we started talking. I think we talked about 15 minutes, and she looked at me and said, uh, so what are you doing? And I looked back at her, and I said, I'm looking for alien life forms. <laughs> <laughs> and in that exact moment, that conversation changed. Uh, for the rest of the flight, she didn't say another word to me. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's put things into uh, perspectives. Um, we're looking for uh, microbial life. Um, in this case, uh, NASA made this big announcement uh, last week that they have discovered some secrets about Mars, uh, liquid water. And uh, so what's so special about liquid water? It consists, the molecules consist of hydrogen and oxygen, which are the most abundant elements in the universe. Uh, so we, we find water ice everywhere, on asteroids, on the moon, on Mars. So that's nothing special about it. But uh, one thing that's very important for at least life on Earth, we need three ingredients. First, we need organics, we need an energy source, and we need liquid water. If we have those three ingredients, life could start anywhere. And that makes it so special. So. Uh, the big announcement of finding water on Mars uh, has the possibility of actually finding uh, life as well. But the life we're looking for in this case is, is microbes, is tiny microorganisms, uh, some of the smallest building blocks of life, and they could flourish everywhere. And since the beginning of, of time, uh, there's only been a small, small fraction in the history of Earth there have been no life about 100 million years of 4.5 billion years. So we can find them everywhere, in, in the driest places, in deserts, beneath the rocks. We find them in hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, in uh, battery acids, and cooling water of nuclear reactors. This specific type is called extremophiles. It's the most extreme uh, microbes you can ever find, and those are the kind we're actually looking for to find on Mars. But to go to Mars, let's put things into a perspective. Here you can see an actual uh, picture of Earth on the, on the left side and, Earth, uh, and the moon to the, to the right side. Uh, we think that the moon is much closer than the reality. It's actually 400,000 kilometers between Earth and Mars, uh, Earth and the moon. That's about 10 times traveling around the world, we know. Uh, 
And that's the farthest place humans have ever placed their foot in human history. And since the Apollo era, humans haven't been farther away than one pixel uh, outside of, of Earth. And that's quite, that's a quite astonishing that nothing has happened since Apollo. But what are we doing now? We want to send, uh, of course, uh, missions to Mars, humans to Mars eventually. But for now, we're sending you robotics. We're trying to find traces of life to understand where are we coming from? What are we? And we can't find those answers here on Earth. We need to go to Mars to find those answers. But to get to Mars, it's quite demanding. Mars could be as far as 1,000 times as far away than Earth, than the Moon. Uh, it, at closest, it could be 56 million kilometers. And it could take about nine months for a rocket to get there. And uh, when you get there, this is how it looks like. This is actually a picture taken on Mars. It's an amazing landscape. It uh, looks very similar to what we find here on Earth. But don't be fooled, it's a very deadly alien planet. The atmosphere is uh, a very uh, low atmospheric pressure. It's about 100 times less dense than on Earth. That's about 36 kilometers up in, in our atmosphere. It uh, consists of uh, mostly carbon dioxide. You can't breathe it. The temperatures are, on average, about 55 degrees below zero, and it could get as low as 130 degrees at the coldest at the poles. On the opposite side, during uh, summertime, it could get 20 degrees uh, at the equatorial regions. But uh, before you start planning your next vacation to Mars, you should consider bringing a very strong uh, sun protection or sunscreening. Because the radiation levels on Mars are 700 times higher. So you can basically tan 700 times faster on Mars if you decide to go there. <laughs> and we all, uh, we're always talking about uh, time management, that the days are too short. Uh, one benefit of actually going to Mars is you have 37 minutes longer day. And the scientists working on the, uh, the, uh, the missions, they're actually working on Mars days. So every day they go to work 37 minutes earlier. So it's kind of different. Um, but um, there's a lot of water on, on Mars, uh, as we have announced. Um, but in the sense of uh, water ice. And because of the, the low atmospheric pressure and, and surface temperature, uh, water is not stable. Uh, for example, if we have uh, water on Earth, we have three phases. We have solid, as water ice. And uh, if, if we uh, warm up that water ice, melt it, it becomes water, liquid water. And if it he heat it even more, it becomes vapor. But on Mars, it's totally different. If you have water ice and you melt it, it jumps over the liquid phase and becomes vapor. And that's also a big issue of actually why we haven't found any evidence of uh, liquid water yet. But on a short amount of time, during the coldest, uh, at uh, nighttime, we can find traces of liquid water. And that's what we're actually looking for. And this is the first selfie taken from Mars by the Curiosity rover. It's uh, been there since 2012. Um, humans sent the first robots to Mars in 1978, uh, at least landed on the surface, the Viking 1 and Viking 2. And since then, we have done a lot of uh, gathering a lot of data of the, the surface. Uh, the surface of Mars is actually more mapped than, than Earth. It's covered by a thin layer of dust. Uh, beneath the regolith is mostly permafrost and the uh, volcanic rocks. Um, there's a lot of uh, basalt, which is a common rock here on Earth. It's quite demanding to send technology to Mars. First of all, the, the distance. By radio signal, it takes from four minutes to 20 minutes each direction. So at the worst, it could actually take 40 minutes from you sending a signal to Mars to you get it back. And that means a lot of things can happen. Uh, and as well, we have to, to design them to be autonomous. They have to think by themselves. They need to operate. If they see obstacles, they need to understand that this is an obstacle, it's a hazard, and avoid it. Uh, and on top of that, there's a lot of other issues as well with the technology. You don't have spare parts available. Uh, the temperature as well. We have the thermal expansion factor. That means that if you heat up something, 
it tends to expand, and if you cool it down, it, sh it shrinks. So if you have temperature variations of almost 100 degrees in less than six hours, it will, uh, it's a big factor that it could actually break up. So it's very demanding designing a space system to, uh, to survive the surface of Mars. And a lot of times, um, we send over signals uh, or codes to the, to the rovers. Uh, so in, in this case, uh, this is the uh, Opportunity rover. Uh, they send a command string that, okay, you're going to drive 50 meters. And then uh, when they got the signal back, uh, the rover had, hadn't moved any, anywhere. It was actually digging itself into the ground. And when this happens, NASA gathers the most experienced and oldest scientists they have and um, take a similar rover into a sandbox uh, with the very similar conditions, at least the same sand as Mars. And they start playing with it. And uh, after a while, they, uh, they make this huge, uh, extensive report, which tells them, OK, we have, we have the solution. And uh, they send that report to another uh, group of even more experienced and older scientists to evaluate, is this actually a good solution? And most of the time, they say, yeah, it's a pretty good solution. And when they have decided that, yeah, let's go ahead, they send it to the control center to execute the, the, the order. And the summary of that report is, gun it in reverse. <laughs> so drilling on Mars is a big topic right now. Uh, life cannot survive the surface, the extreme environments. You need to go beneath the surface. So this is the first time ever uh, drilling on Mars. This is the Curiosity rover. Uh, it's actually uh, quite good release today. Uh, this is the first time ever that they have been drilling deeper than five centimeters. So it's 6.5 centimeters today they drill into the surface. And this is what uh, we need to find, find life on Mars. And it's very demanding. So for example, in conventional drilling here on Earth, we have a huge footprint of the systems. We have to apply a lot of forces, rotational forces or uh, hammering forces to break up the rocks. And sending things to Mars, we don't actually have much uh, volume or mass available. So we need to be very careful of what we're sending and actually how it works. And if you drill in, in, um, in water ice, you create something uh, like friction heat. So when you rub your hands, you create uh, heat. It's the same heat from the drill on the borehole walls as you rotate it. And that uh, heat could melt the water ice. But on Mars, water is not stable. So what happens? It turns into vapor. So it takes all the energy out, and it frees the drill into the borehole. So it's very, very challenging uh, to drill on Mars. On top of that, it needs to do it by itself. Uh, and uh, I'm going to show you something special today. This is uh, in Norwegian technology. It's developed by a company called uh, Subtech. This small device here uh, is the smallest high voltage, high current micro transformer ever built. Uh, this small device here can actually drill on Mars. Uh, it's going to do some plasma drilling. That actually means that we are creating micro channels, like tiny, tiny channels. Of, it's like lighting bolts, actually shooting lighting bolts into the rock. And it creates a very small micro channel. And inside, it expands. So it breaks up the rock from inside. Uh, so this is actually technology that we are developing right now for a company called Subtech, for a Plus Mars project. It's a European Space Agency funded project. Uh, if everything goes as we planned, we could actually send it to Mars in, in about seven years. And we just started this project. And uh, next month, we have um, built up our, our lab in, in Stavanger. And we are going to test sapping all kinds of rocks inside a Mars simulated chamber of low temperature and low pressure to see how it actually works. And we know it works. We have done it before. It looks like a lightsaber. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah, but so why are we doing all this? First of all, this is preparing for the big, big thing in human history. It's sending the first humans to Mars. First of all, uh, when humans go to Mars, uh, Obama says he will probably experience it. So in the mid-30s, we will send probably the first humans to Mars. We, did, we would need resources. And those resources 
will be gathered by drilling, for example. And NASA has been developing uh, the most state-of-art in rockets, huge rockets that could get us even deeper into space than today. And I think that the next decade, a lot of uh, scientific discoveries would be, uh, would be found of quite high significance. And I think that beneath the surface, there's, surface, uh, there's conditions you find that uh, life could flourish on Earth. So there's a big possibility that we would find life on Mars in the next, next decade. And the coolest thing about that as well is Norwegian technology can actually take a part in it. So um, by that, I would like to thank you. Thank you all. And I hope you had an interesting uh, lecture. <laughs>